All right, guys, in this video, we are going to attempt to take a look at the most budget friendly option for the new event coming to Master Duel in June 2023. That is the Legend Anthology Academy event. And sure enough, I think Dark Magician is going to be a very powerful deck for this event. And I'm going to explain this deck list for you in just a second. Some of the choices in this deck make it very different from every other format that you might play Dark Magician in. So you probably want to pay attention in this video because there are some unorthodox choices and some compromises that you have to make. But not really. The deck is essentially at full power, in my opinion, and it should be very strong. Before we get started, let me explain how this is free to play. So every ultra and super rare in this deck, more or less, um, can be obtained in the Vortex of Magic structure deck, which you spend 1,500 gems to obtain three copies from. And you can see here the Dark Magician, the Magician Souls, um, the Illusion of Chaos, things like that, and all of the relevant uh, extra deck monsters come in the structure deck already so you don't have to spend all of these resources to obtain the relevant cards to build this deck you spend 1500 gems you have you know three copies of the magician souls three copies of the illusion of chaos etc that you just are able to throw into the deck i will go over what you probably want to craft and even of those cards that are craftable a lot of them are optional depending on how you want to play the deck so this is a very, very budget friendly version. And this is something that I'm going to be playing, I think on my main account, even um, I'm going to buy that Dark Magician structure deck times three, because this deck is also very fun to play. So let's get straight into the list. I'm opting to play three Dark Magicians in like competitive formats. You want to play two, ver two, but in this, in this uh, event, you want to play three. Why? Because you can utilize this card with some of the um, Xyz monsters that are still legal in this event. By the way, if you don't know, this event is severely limited in terms of the cards you can play. You can't even play basic hand traps. You can't play like power uh, negates like called by the grave, evenly match board breakers, things like that. So a lot of archetypes, powerful, like just broken cards like Baron and Nibiru are all banned for this event. That bodes very well because these are all cards that beat Dark Magician. So this deck and its power level has been elevated quite heavily. Now that being said, this is like the GX era, so things like Hero will be legal. However, power cards from the Hero deck also are severely limited. Things like the uh, Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer is not legal in this event. And things like uh, the Blackwing cards, I think, are also legal. But a lot of their cards, not a lot, but some of their cards are limited. Like the, uh, the Synchro Monster that burns you is not legal in this event, I don't think. But some of the cards that are legal for them are like the Blackwing Full Armor Master Towers Monster. So we're going to go over kind of how we build this deck to combat some of the powerful cards that we might see from other decks, but also support the core engine. So how has this list been updated for this event? Like I said, three Dark Magician because it enables you to play some of the Xyz monsters that you weren't able to play before. We'll go over that once we cover the extra deck. Three Magician Souls. This is pretty standard. Your Rod has been limited to two. This is something you normally would play three of, but the two doesn't really hurt. You only need to ever see one, and once you get that one in rotation, as long as it isn't banished, which again it shouldn't be because the opponents uh, aren't going to be aren't going to be playing like even Lees and call buys and things like that. Once you see one in rotation, that's all you need. You don't really need the second one. Um, it can come up sometimes, but not really too much. And with that, you know, as soon as you get one to hand it's it's you're, you're fine and there's a number of different ways you can get this card to your hand we'll go over that in just a bit one dmg because it enables you to play some of the cards that you're adding into the deck in place of some of the cards that you're not able to play anymore like no floodgates are legal for this event for example so i'm opting to play bond between teacher and student and dark burning magic and magician's combination and then it gives you some additional benefit off Soul Servant and the Field Spell as well. Since you cannot play the uh, Secret Village, you are going to be keeping this Magician Salvation up on the field. Um, so DMG, just a good card to get into rotation along with the Dark Magician. And having both of these cards, again, just big monsters that you can just throw up on the board that will beat over your opponent's resources. Kaijus are not legal for this event, so I'm opting to play three Lava Golem. I don't know if this is going to be a good decision. I think it is, because if I go second and the opponent is able to pop off and go full combo, put up like an Armor Master and some other things, this is one of the ways I can break the board. Just bring out a Lava Golem, take off the uh, opponent's boss monsters. Then if I get a circle in rotation, I can just banish this card or fusion summon into one of my big fusions and just beat over it in defense mode. Um, we'll cover that a little bit later. But the main reason that this card is actually kind of useful is because you know, you don't normally need your normal summon. The only card in this whole deck, I think, that your normal summon is really going to be Magician's Rod. So if you don't need the, the normal summon of Magician's Rod, or you're able to, like, say, okay, I'm not going to normal summon my, my rod. I'll, I'd rather Lava Golem. I can play around it. That's fine, because, 
you, you're going to be special summoning, special summoning off of the Magician Souls, off of your Eternal Soul, off of your Super Poly, etc. These are all cards that kind of play around the Lava Golem restriction of sacrificing your normal summon. And it has a very powerful effect, right? You, you break the opponent's board essentially with it. So good option. One Timaeus, again, not a card you normally play, but this is just a free big body that you can throw up on the board if you draw into it. And it has the additional utility of being able to fusion summon if you need as well. Illusion of Chaos is limited to two, not a big deal. You only play two in the deck anyways because you're still able to play three Preparation of Rights, which searches your Illusion of Chaos. So you're essentially playing five copies of Illusion, which is really good um, because you can thin out your deck and get the most powerful consistency card in the deck to your hand and start gathering your resources as needed. Uh, one Raigeki and one Monster Reborn. Iffy choices if you want to play these or not. Uh, these are kind of just, you know, dead draw, not dead draws, but like you have to hard draw them and then they may or may not be useful in the moment. Um, but in the essence of keeping the deck free to play, uh, these are free from the solo mode. So why not just throw them in there? They are very powerful cards when they do come up and, you know, just regecking all of your opponent's monsters can be very, very beneficial, obviously. And then reborning like your own dark magician or something from the opponent's, uh, uh graveyard can be very uh, impactful as well. One Dark Magic Attack, because it is searchable off Eternal Soul, and then this card just wipes the back row with when you have Dark Magician, which, again, should be at all times, essentially. So the fact that this is searchable makes it actually better than Harpy's Feather Duster, which kind of falls into the same category as Raigeki and Monster Reborn in that you have to hard draw it. So this, this being searchable is, is much better. I've already explained preparation, so I'm not going to go into that again. I have Timaeus because you're able to fusion summon any of the Dark Magician fusions with only Dark Magician. I actually really like this card in regular ranked mode, but it just got power crept out of the deck. So in this event, it should be really, really good because there are some very nasty locks you can put up with like Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight and like Eternal Soul. These two cards protect each other and it's essentially an unbreakable uh, lock in the event. Your opponent has to like lava golem away your, your your Dragon Knight here or something in order to get it off the field or just beat beat into it and hope that you know they can beat over it. Um, that's really the only way they're outing it. So it's a really strong uh, combination of cards when you get this in, into rotation. Uh, moving along here, um, again, some of the cards you wouldn't normally play, Bond Between Teacher and Student. All you need is a Dark Magician, and then you've got this card in your hand, which I think is searchable off Soul Servant. Haven't actually tested it, but it should be. And you just you grab a Dark Magician Girl from your, your deck for free, and then you set a Dark Burning Magic, um, which just destroys all cards your opponent controls when you have both Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl on the field. Um, so yeah, just super strong. Just, you know, destroy everything, and then win the game, most likely, next turn. So uh, pretty strong stuff. One Field Spell. Uh, again, this is searchable off of like Magician's Rod and, and uh, Soul Servant, things like that. And then it gets you your Eternal Soul. So again, just super strong. And then you actually will be using the effect to cycle through Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl um, with the uh, Field Spell effect, which is actually pretty nice. Two Circle, limited to two. You only play two anyway. So again, another limit that doesn't really do anything for the deck um, or, or, or detriment or any detriment to the deck. No problem there. Don't need to explain this. This card is the card that you definitely want in rotation first because probably one of the best cards in the deck because it banishes every time you get a dark magician on the field ba not i think it's non-targeting banish too isn't it um if dark magician is normal or special summon to your field oh no it is targeting so you can target one card your opponent controls banish it but pretty useful right um regardless so uh, it can come up a lot once you have this uh, continuous spell in in rotation you're you're pretty much winning the match if you have a dark magician to go along with it with like an eternal soul the only ultra rare that you have to craft for the main deck in my opinion would be super polymerization you do not have to use this but it will be very useful because it can help out like hero monsters it can help out black wing monsters because they're all dark winged beasts uh, for example and then you want to make garua mud dragon is not legal for this event but you can super poly away two of the opponent's cards as they're trying to synchro climb before they get to their full armor master, which would be unaffected by the super poly. You make Garua, or because they're dark, you make Starving Venom, um, and then you just basically shut down the opponent's turn. You go two for one, basically. I know you have to discard a card for this, but you're, you're, you're coming out ahead because you're getting a resource at the end, and the opponent loses two of their like synchro climbing materials, for example, in, um, in, in Blackwing. So, and then in the mirror match too, it can be very useful because um, I expect to see a lot of Dark Magician in this event. So it should be pretty exciting to see how Super Poly performs. Um, but again, it is an ultra rare, but it is a card again that is being used a lot in the current ranked format in June, 2023, because Tier Limit is playing this for Garua uh, and the mirror match and things like that. It's good against Sprite, etc. cetera. So, um, which, which again, are all very prevalent decks. So it's not like you're just crafting this for Dark Magicians. It is very relevant as well. 
I uh, already explained Dark Burning Magic. Three Soul Servant shouldn't need any explanation, especially since you're playing Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician. You're sometimes able to draw two off of this card when you banish it from your graveyard, but this card searches for any Dark Magician spell, puts it on top of your deck, spell or trap or whatever, and then you just banish this card from your graveyard if you have a Dark Magician in field or graveyard um, or on field and graveyard, and then you draw a card. The Secrets of Dark Magic allows you to use uh, actual ritual summon uh, if, you, if you need to. comes up very rarely, but can come up. Um, or just another way to fusion summon into your fusion monsters if you need it. So having one of it in the deck as a searchable tech option off of like Soul Servant or off of uh, Rod is, is useful. One Imperm, because it's limited to one, it's the only like hand trap that's a, that you're able to play. So you can make the case if you want to play this or not. And then this is the tech card of choice. All the floodgates are banned except this one, Power Sink Stone. You don't really activate a lot of effects with Dark Magician, like on field. Um, so once you get your Dark Magicians in rotation or like your Dragon Knight up, this has no activated effects. It's just a continuous effect. This card will stop all combo decks that you go up against. It'll stop Black Wing effects, uh, Hero effects, etc. Because as soon as two effects are activated, no other activated effects on the field can, can resolve. So, um, or it can even be activated. So it's just a hard stop. It's basically like the, the, I don't want to call it like a poor man skill drain, but it basically is like kind of like skill drain, right? So, you know, for Dark Magicians, it's actually perfect because you might only activate like a rod effect uh, and then, you know, if your opponent tries to activate something during your turn as well, that's it. You activated your rod, they activated an, an effect, and then that's it. No other effects can be activated. So you're basically free to go full combo from there, right? So it's, it's really nice to stop the, the opponent playing during your turn. If they can't even do that in this event, I don't know yet, but we'll see. Uh, but also stop them during their turn, right? If you get this card up and in rotation. And it's only a super rare if you want to craft it. Uh, two Eternal Soul and one Magician's Combination. Um, shouldn't have to explain these. This is your kind of rolling negate with your Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. Moving on to the extra deck, you only need the Garua if you're going to play the Super Polys, so I will be crafting that probably for the event. Uh, and then same with the Starving Venom. You, it's a super rare that you'd have to craft. All of the Dark Magician fusions come in the structure deck. The Xyz monsters, the super rares are, are totally up to you if you want to craft them. If, believe it or not, the rare cards in the Dark Armed and the Ebon Illusion Magician are actually more useful probably. Um, if you were going to craft one of these super rares, the Big Eye is the most useful because it's a permanent change of heart. Um, and again, all of these cards are obviously made off of the Dark Magician. These effects aren't really all that relevant, but if you want, you know, to look up the Diablosis, look up the uh, Ebon High Magician, see if you want to play them and spend the super rare points on it. Um, no Link Spider legal for this event, so you know you're gonna play two I'm Duck or Im Duck, whatever you want to say it. And it is a dragon, so it can come up to fusion summon um, the Dark Magician and I'm Duck into like Dark Magician the Dragon Knight, so it's kind of useful there. And then one Artemis so that you can link off your raw, get it into graveyard so that when you activate a spell or trap during your opponent's turn, you can sacrifice a, a spellcaster on field and then bring this card back to your hand to use during your next turn. So very useful for that as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the deck. It's pretty straightforward. Should be pretty effective. I'm excited to play it. It's super fun to play. Let me know what your thoughts are on Dark Magician. Um, and if you think this deck will be good for the event, uh, again, it's a super, it's super fun deck to play. To wrap it up though, I will kind of just go over, out of all of these cards, the only things that you might have to craft, again, if you want to play the Lava Golems, that's three super rares. The only card I'd say you have to craft is the Preparation of Rights, so this is a three super rare investment deck so far, for sure. Um, aside from that, you know, the Super Polys are optional, and, you know, the, uh, the Floodgate, the Power Sink Stone is also all, uh, optional. But if you wanted to play my version, you know, that's three super rares in the Lava Golems, three super rare in the Preparation of Rights, that's six, and then two for the Power Sink Stone, that's a total of eight super rares invested in the main deck. In the extra deck, uh, you have one Starving Venom, one Big Eye, one Ebon High Magician, one Diablosis, and one Artemis. Out of all of these cards, I would say the only staple is the Artemis. Um, so that brings you to one super rare investment for the extra deck and three mandatory super rare investments for the main deck. Uh, again, my version is eight in the main deck and then one, two, three, four, five, five super rares in the extra deck for a total of 13 super rares that you'd have to craft for this deck. And then of course the ultra rares are the, you know, the Garua and the, the, the two super polys. You can even play three super polys if you want, but that's a total of 90 ultra rare crafting points or three ultra rares. So. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully it was helpful um, explaining the card choices and uh, how you can kind of make this deck free to play. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Stay tuned if you are interested in more uh, Dark Magician gameplay because once the event starts, I will be posting up matches with this deck. I will be playing it on my main account as well because like I said, it's super fun to play. But if you made it this far in the video, thank you again. And a, a like on the video would be appreciated if this video helped you out. Thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.